basically the dna it exists like a condensed chromatin so that in that condensed form it can fit into the nucleus the dna by itself is negatively charged the negatively charged dna it will be looping twice around positively charged proteins called histones they form an octamer around the histone octamer and that forms what is called as a nucleosome bead is what you need to remember so what are these histones there are two amino acids very rich in histones a very high yield fact for the exam lysine and arginine they are very rich in the histones he is fortunate to ultimately remember now there are varieties of histones h1 h2 h3 etc h1 binds to the nucleosome and to the linker dna and it is the h1 which stabilizes the chromatin fiber so that's the point you need to appreciate and if you take the various histones most of the histone proteins are all the part of the nucleosome core now you understood what is nucleosome right so basically the dna looping around histones forms the nucleosome inside the core you have all the histones but the h1 is the only histone that is not inside the nucleosome core is what you need to appreciate so what happens at the time of mitosis the dna basically condenses to form the chromosomes now mitosis has got various phases i mean the cell cycle s phase g phase m phase etc out of all during which phase dna and histone synthesis basically occurred it occurs during the s phase which is otherwise called synthetic phase is what you need to basically remember now what is a common high yielding fact when you go for the exam always the basic sciences biochemistry microbiology physiology whenever you study it is with the application orientation ultimately when you do medicine surgery gynecology obstetrics psychiatry anesthesia you start using drugs all these principles must come into application that is they also become the high yield mcqs in the exam so a very common mcq asked in the exam is high auto antibody titers to the histones we mentioned of histone proteins without any other auto antibodies only anti histone antibodies are present what is it diagnostic of it is diagnostic of drug induced lupus is what you have to basically remember now what are the drugs that are implicated leading to the development of the lupus procainamide hydralazine and isoniazid i am very happy to see today the full floor of students from vizag anantapur tirupati everybody getting online so we had a festival season of ramadan all these days so that's the reason we were going little slow now we will try to have more frequently the sessions live sessions so you can always make use of it now doctor i like to ask you an mcq waking you up from the sleep Which of the following out of this is seen only in the prokaryotes, but not in eukaryotic cells? Between histones, endoplasmic reticulum, nucleoid, etc., etc. Basically, um, histone histone proteins are a. Uh, in fact, histones are seen. Uh, Uh, let's skip this mcq yeah we'll go to this in dna tertiary structure what is a histone octamer shoot an answer doctor do you think histone octamer shall be called a complex of eight positively charged histone proteins that help in packaging dna or do you like to consider histone proteins are negatively charged ones what is the most appropriate statement for this can online students can punch the answer for this question doctor a that's right it has got eight positively charged histone proteins two each of h2a h2b h3 and h4 
and they all basically help in packaging the DNA is what you have to basically remember. Now, what is the wrong statement out of this? Should you answer, doctor? Do you think that in eukaryotes, histones are poorly conserved? Is it a true one? Or you mean to say they are well conserved? Maliha's answer is A. Vaishali, Bhalina, Tirupati, Anantapur, Manu, everybody is proposing A as an answer, which is true. That is, there are at least five different classes of histones. Histones are rich in lysine and arginine, two amino acids, as what we have discussed. And uh, it is the beads of string form, nucleosome, in which the DNA is organized, is what you need to basically remember. Now, should be a correct answer out of this. The core nucleosome, that is the nucleosome core, it is basically composed of what? Is it composed of all the types of histones? Only few types of histones, which is the histone which is not the part of the nucleosome core, etc. etc. You need to be very sure. So, what is the answer? Please punch the question number. Oh, question number is not there. All right. Please do punch your answer, doctor. Once more, A. Two copies each of the histone, H2A, H2B, H3 and H4, in a 147 base pair of DNA, typically constitutes the core nucleosome, is what you have to basically remember. Now, we studied about different types of histones. Now, you tell me what is your answer. When histone H1 gets incorporated into nucleosome, what happens to the nucleosome? You like to say it increases the probability of the condensation of the chromatin? Absolutely right. So, that is the very purpose of histones. Histones enable the chromatin condensation is what you have to fundamentally appreciate. Now, in vitro, if you take, in vitro, in vivo, huh? the rate of transcription from the DNA, is it higher if the histones are present or is it lower when the histones are present or will it proceed in a wrong direction if the histones are present? What is the more appropriate statement? You like to say C? Will it catalyze or will it enable the right direction? What is the purpose of histones? It basically will, uh, uh, it will be lower, the rate of transcription from DNA, because it becomes a condensed DNA. A condensed DNA is not the one ready for replication. So, there is a reason, is lower when histones are present than the histones are absent. Histones will keep the DNA packed. The packed clothes we don't wear, they are staying inside the box. So, that's the point of interest. Now, in what situation you will most likely to see the chromatin in the beads of a string conformation out of all this? Beads of string conformation. The most likely scenario. Basically, the actively transcribed chromatin is the one which is in the form of a beads of a string, nucleosomal pattern is what you have to basically appreciate. Now, let us look at the various types of chromatin. So, what is heterochromatin? It is condensed, transcriptionally inactive, sterically inaccessible form of the chromatin is called heterochromatin. Easy to remember is H is hetero. There are only two types, euchromatin, hetero, no homochromatin. Like homosexuals, heterosexuals, you are thinking? No, no. Heterochromatin, euchromatin, two types. Heterochromatin is highly condensed. Euchromatin, you means what? True. The only DNA which is truly transcribed, transcriptionally active, is the one which is called euchromatin is what you have to fundamentally appreciate. Now, there is a phenomenon called methylation of DNA. What is DNA methylation? 
if you look at uh, the dna the template strand of the dna in that the cytosine and adenine nucleotides will be there in the template strand they are typically methylated in the dna replication and why such a methylation of the cytosine and adenine should occur at the time of replication on the template strands what is the purpose served by that that will allow the mismatch repair enzymes to identify which is the old strand and the new strand see there are two things dna is a double stranded one it will be unzipped so you get two individual strands each of the strand will typically lead to formation of a daughter strand and how is daughter strand is forming by reading the template i mean the parent strand and uh, adenine to thymine bond into cytosine like that there is a matching that happens and the daughter strand forms during the formation of the daughter strand suppose if there is any abnormality wrong match happens the repair enzymes have to repair the daughter strand so for that repair enzyme should identify which is daughter strand which is the parent strand for that daughter strand how will it tell the repair enzymes that oh i am the daughter strand typically in the daughter strand the cytosine and adenine are methylated that is a purpose to enable the the mismatch repair enzymes to identify the daughter strand that is the purpose of the methylation so there are two questions commonly asked which residues which nucleotides in the daughter strand are the ones which are methylated cytosine and adenine why they are methylated so that the mismatch repair enzymes can identify which is the daughter strand so that is the purpose similarly there is another methylation which will occur in pockets of cytosine and guanine islands called cpg islands what is the purpose of that those areas which have undergone methylation that part of the dna there the transcription become repressed there must be activation of transcription when required and there is a need of suppressing the transcription so how will this mechanism locking unlocking the toggling how it is done the toggling is done by dna methylation at the cpg islands so two common questions occur what is the purpose of methylation of certain certain nucleotides two purposes when methylation of cytosine and adenine occur that is to make the daughter strand identified by the mismatch repair enzymes whenever it occurs on the cpg islands it is basically to repress the transcription is what you have to fundamentally understand then usually histones undergo methylation and uh, it is a reversible repression of the dna transcription that occur by the process of the histone histone proteins are there no they are methylation is what you have to basically remember so there's a reason how will you remember histone methylation makes the dna become mute that means transcriptionally it become regressed is what you have to basically remember cpg methylation otherwise will make the dna become mute is what you need to fundamentally understand then there are some other things that occur some other switch on switch off mechanisms by which the dna will be identified that this is the dna meant for replication or not what are the other important modifications histone acetylation what it will be doing it will be relaxing the dna coil and it will be allowing it the transcription to proceed methylation makes the dna mute but acetylation makes the dna a for active is what you have to basically remember 
So now you give an answer for this MCQ, doctor. DNA methylation is associated with what is going to be your like a scud missile, you should answer in exam. CPG islands. Agree? Will it increase the gene transcription? No. It will lead to muting of the repression of the gene transcription is what you have to basically remember. You answer this MCQ, doctor. Which histone is not a part of the nucleosome? It is the H1 is not a part of the nucleosome. It is outside the nucleosome is what you need to remember. Histones are rich in lysine and arginine. Complete the sentence because what is the reason? Because DNA is negatively charged. DNA is negatively charged but histones are positively charged. Right? Now, what are the two potential mechanisms? Are we going to go out of power or uh, no problem with the power? No issue? Okay. Two potential mechanisms by which eukaryotic cells regulate the transcription. What is your answer for this question? We thought uh, instead of giving a very long lecture on the DNA, we talk few facts and keep checking how are you doing. Obsessive compulsive neurotic teachers. So it okay, you are receiving means Wi-Fi broadcast is fine. Huh? Now tell me doctor, what is your answer? One confident answer. D you want to say? Excellent. DNA methylation and histone acetylation are the two common mechanisms by which the DNA replication is being regulated is what you have to fundamentally understand. So that is the story doctor which is called chromatin structure, the first topic.